Hi everyone! Before I get started, I want to let you know that I am really new to sewing. I only know how to sew three different things and none of them have a pattern. So what I'm going to show you today, anyone can do. So this is the third face mask or face covering video that I have made. And as I go along, I learn things that make it easier or better. And I really like the one I'm going to show you today. So let me show you the progression. The first one I made was the pleated face mask. Guess what? If you are a beginner, oh my gosh, that's a pain. That is a true headache. I thought there has got to be an easier way. And somebody left me a message and let me know that because of the way that I put the elastic in, which is, well, let me show you on that one, which is through these little tunnels is what I like to call them. So the elastic isn't sewn in. They said there's no need for the pleats because that gathers it, which this one I'm going to show you is a really bad example because um, I made it out of fabric that was too thick. But basically, it gathers it so it doesn't need pleats. So this was my second one that I did, which was you couldn't get any easier than a rectangle. But you know what? The sides were too fat. They just didn't gather enough, in my opinion. You know, there's really a big, big difference here between the ends. It was just too big. So I came up with a third one that I'm going to show you today. So let's head on over. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make your own pattern. And as you can see, I've cut a piece of cardboard to be five inches across and six inches tall. You'll also notice that I measured down one inch and up one inch on the one side and have drawn a line from the corner to those one inch marks. And what you're going to do is just cut them off. And once you've done that, your pattern is going to look just like this. Now in this next picture, you're going to see on the six inch side, I wrote place on the fold. So that means that you're going to fold your fabric and then you are going to place that edge on the fold before you cut it out. It doesn't matter whether you use scissors or a rotary cutter, just use what you have. And once you open up your piece of fabric, this is what it will look like, and you're going to need two pieces. They can be two pieces that are the same or two different fabrics. Next, you're going to take those two pieces of fabric and put them so that the right sides are facing each other and the wrong sides are on the outside. And then before you sew them, you are going to place two pins about two and a half to three inches apart so that when you sew, you leave that area open so that you can turn this right side out. And now it's time to go over to the sewing machine and sew a seam around the edges, approximately a quarter of an inch to a half an inch from the edge. And remember to back stitch at the beginning and the end just to keep it more secure. And don't forget to leave that opening that was two and a half to three inches. So this is what you've got so far. And the next thing we're going to do is grab a pair of scissors and we're going to go cut those corners off. Now, don't cut all the way down to the stitching, but just cut off that excess because it's going to make it easier when you turn it right side out to make your corners look nice and sharp. And once that's done, it's time to find that opening that you didn't sew up and start turning your mask right side out. And actually, it is really easy to do, as you can see. And while I'm doing this, I thought I would let you know that you can actually make this mask bigger or smaller, depending on your needs, just by making your pattern a little bit bigger or smaller each direction. So now it's time to make those corners look nice. And what I'm using is called a bone folder. And a lot of us crafters have those. But if you're not a crafter and you are looking for something to use, you can use a chopstick or the end of a ballpoint pen that is obviously not open because you don't want ink on here. But anything that can get up there and poke those little corners out and make them look nice. Once you're done with that, it's time to smooth everything out, you know, get everything laying the way it's supposed to. And you'll notice on the opening there that it actually folds in nicely to match up with the seams. 
As you can see, I had to do a little bit more straightening to get everything to lay out exactly like it's supposed to. So take your time and don't panic if it takes a minute for you to get everything lined up and looking the way that it's supposed to. And now it's time to iron it. Make sure that everything is nice and smooth and perfect the way it should be. And once you do that, you have to decide what you're going to do with that opening. Are you going to leave it open so that you can um, put in a filter or are you going to close it off? And either way, you are going to be needing that heat and bond that I just showed you. And what I'm doing right now is putting a piece of it in there that I'm going to iron in because I'm actually going to be closing off that opening. But you would still use the same thing if you wanted to leave it open. But instead of using it to seal it, you would use it to hold back the raw edges of the fabric that are in there. And to be honest, if you are a really good seamstress and you are closing that off, you really don't need to use the heat and bond. You can just go to the next step, which is I'll show you in a minute. We're going to be sewing around the edges. But I use that to close it off because I am not that good and I want to make sure it stays closed when I do sew around the edges again. But if you're using heat and bond, the directions on how to use it come on the packaging. It is really easy to use. You like iron it down for about two seconds, peel off the backing, and then iron everything together for about seven seconds. Okay, so now we're ready to head back over to the sewing machine, and we are just going to sew around those edges, leaving about a quarter of an inch, like you're seeing right there. And that gives it a really nice finished look. Okay, and now that that step is done, and by the way, doesn't that look nice? Now it's time to start working on what I call the tunnels to put the elastic through. And so what you're going to do is fold over an end approximately three-fourths of an inch, and you're just going to sew right down the same stitching that's already there. And once you do that, it's going to look just like this. Okay, now that that's done, it's time to put the elastic in. And this is the elastic that I use, and as you can see, it's two millimeter. Um, and I believe I got that at Amazon, but I'm sure you can get it at any fabric store. And I'm using 11 inches for each earpiece. You can use 11 inches or 12 inches. Um, it just depends on your face size and your comfort. Now to thread those elastics through those tunnels, you can use a paper clip or a safety pin. I like using a paper clip and it's just really easy because you just kind of tie it on one end and slide it through that little tunnel. And I know that there are some of you that would have sewn it in or laid it in there before they sewed it. But for me, this is so much easier, but you do it however is the easiest for you. And once you get it in there, the only thing left to do is tie it in a knot. And the nice thing is you can untie it again later if you want, if you find out that it's not the right size. But this is how I do the knot. As you can see, it's, it's double. And then you pull the ends and you stretch it. And you'll know if you're stretching it the right way because one way you pull it, it's going to get tight the other way it won't. So just make sure that you're pulling it and so the knot becomes tight. And then all you have to do is slide that into the little tunnel and no one's ever going to see it or feel it. And now I'm just going to add the elastic the same way to the other side and we will be done. If you don't have elastic, you can use shoelaces or you can cut a skinny piece of t-shirt material to use in place of the elastic. There are a lot of options that you can use. And if you wear glasses or hearing aids or it's uncomfortable for you to wear these around your ears, I have another video that I've made that I will link below at the top of the description box. And I will probably link it at the end of this video on the screen as well. But it shows different ways to wear the masks that don't go over the ears.
And don't forget, I'm also going to have links below to my previous face mask videos in case you are interested in seeing those options as well. Okay, the elastic is in for both ear pieces, and this is what the mask looks like. But when you pull on the elastic ends to go over your ears, then it looks a little bit more like a pleated face mask, but not quite. And here are some pictures to give you a couple of different views and let you see how this face mask fits, because I know a lot of people wonder. I hope this video has been helpful and easy to follow, and everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, and have a blessed day.